Good morning and welcome to Killick & Co's podcast for the 13th of January. Just a quick look at last week because it was a busy week despite it being just the first week back in the new year, um, culminating in the non-farm payroll number which came out on Friday. It's quite a shocking number actually, the number coming in at 74,000. High hopes for a number of nearer 200,000 shows how far that um, particular number was missed. Uh, within the data, it also revealed that the unemployment rate had dropped very sharply down to 6.7% from 7%. Um, and this looks like uh, as a result of uh, quite a large number of people dropping off, uh, in effect, the, uh, the jobs data list um, with, with benefits. Net result, of course, um, is that the stock market over that period of time um, is broadly flat on the year to date, um, with a with a bit of volatility, and uh, we'll take a little bit longer, a uh, little bit later in this presentation at, um, at some of the bond yields as well as to how they have moved. Um, starting off with the diary for this week, well, I think it's going to be really a little bit more. Um, more about the, uh, the, the company data. Um, last week um, we had a, a raft of uh, retailers uh, reporting and uh, we'll cover those in a bit more depth very shortly. But just in terms of the results for the week ahead, um, today we've had quite an interesting deal out from oil services group AMEC. Uh, looking to sort of uh, add a $3 billion um, takeover target in the US um, with a company called Foster Wheeler um, they're buying. There is a small profit warning out of um, AMEC this morning. We've also seen a bit of corporate activity, Sports Direct buying uh, a stake in Debenhams. Debenhams, you may recall, being one of the worst hit in the retail a performance over the course of Christmas, okay, well, uh, the shares dropping back from the sort of 90 points, uh, 90 pence to down to 70 pence. Well, they're rallying quite sharply on the back of the fact that Sports Direct have used that opportunity to take a just shy of 5% stake in the business. So, a um, little bit of activity. And in terms of the week ahead, I'd highlight a few things. First of all, the house builders uh, will continue to report. Now, we've already seen results out from Persimmon. Um, they were very strong and has led to some modest upgrades there at Persimmon. We'll be hearing from Barrett, um, Barrett Developments and Bovis Homes as well this week and really it, it feels to me as if this sector continues to thrive. Um, it's not all about house prices going up. In fact, I don't think really any of the house builders have been talking about price inflation of any, been any notable effect at the moment. It's all been about volumes. It's all been about converting the land banks they have into units and uh, we're seeing 10, 15, maybe even near a 20% volume growth for the house builders at the moment. Given that largely most of these companies did uh, recapitalise during the recession with significant rights issues, the debt levels are low, so a lot of this cash is flowing through to the bottom line. So the sector is working very well and we'll be talking also about some of the second tier players behind the house builders who will clearly be benefiting from some of this volume uplift at the moment. We'll also be hearing from Ladbrooks. It's fair to say that the online um, and uh, physical betting uh, sites um, have had quite a poor start to 2014. Um, William Hill and Ladbrokes both falling by about 7% on one day last week. And this is coming about a um, number of reasons. Primarily, um, there is a continued focus on the FOBTs. These are the in-line in-house betting terminals um, that are attracting attention from Labour's Ed Miliband. We spoke in our 2014 predictions about the impact of political intervention at the moment. Um, it's always been around but it just seems to have more notable impact at the moment as governments to get to grips with some of the positives and negative angles of business at the moment. And last week, as mentioned, it was the betting shops to, to take the hit um, on the back of these numbers. So we'll be hearing from Labrooks um, later in the week and w w William Hill on Friday so um, maybe there's a chance for a bounce back here, um, time will tell. So let's just take a look at um, some of the um, key sort of um, charts for last week. And I want to really start with, with the US 10-year um, uh, as a major driver of stock markets. Um, we believe that the bond markets are having some, some heavy influence and uh, we, we've seen that um, now that the US 10-year has twice breached the 3% level. Um, this happened first of all back in September um, and of course it happened uh, just at the end of the year beginning of 2014. But those non-farm payroll numbers last week um, have in certainly um, tightened rates there back down to around 2.85%. So quite a notable move last week um, for the US 10-year and uh, really the focus is on the fact that we've got this sort of quandary about tapering 
um, that started, the first $10 billion coming off of the tapering and expectations that that will continue at a monthly rate. This jobs data, does it throw a spanner in the works or was it just the fact that it was December creating quite an odd anomaly on that? I think the market is probably going to sort of judge over a course of maybe a two, three month period as to whether this is a trend or just a piece of anomaly in the, um, in the data at the moment. Nevertheless, quite a big move there on that, um, on that uh, tenure. Um, also, um, uh, I think it's worth pointing out about the way that the currency is moving in light of that. We, we see here that the uh, euro last week, again, 138 seems to be the sort of uh, top level on the US against the US dollar at the moment. We did see some weakness coming through um, in the euro last week, but that little pop-up um, towards the end of last week was reflective of a weakening dollar on the back of that uh, non-farm pay payroll number. I um, just want to turn to some stocks that are, I think are moving and featuring at the moment. Barclay Homes continues uh, to, to roar ahead in line with the, the sector. This is one of our 2014 stocks um, and as mentioned we, we favour the sector at the moment and this company um, will be paying out its interim dividend and that's later this week. It was disclosed in December but um, the sector as I say proven to be very strong. The sector that's proven to be quite weak in the opening of 2014 is mining stocks. Um, they weren't particularly good performers in 2013 but really a combination of the mining stocks to heading lower. Also seeing some weakness in the China Shanghai index at the moment so that uh, hasn't started 2014 quite in fine style um, but um, I just think it's notable Rio Tinto was coming into the year on a sort of rising up trend 34 pounds back to 31.57. Uh, losses of around 8 to 10 percent um, across the board in some of the mining stocks at the moment so it's a notable sort of weak start for, for, the, um, for, for the sector. Um, going in the opposite direction, following up some of the big oil stocks, um, we are seeing um, uh, uh, a little bit of a bounce back. This is the share price chart of um, Royal Dutch Shell and as you can see there that's a one-year chart now breaking out towards the top end of that range. It's been very range-bound as a stock during 2013, really lacklustre performance for the business but um, just notable that as the miners are weakening the oil stocks are moving ahead and that's quite a notable start to 2000 and, um, 2014. Quick glance at um, Tesco and um, the results that uh, came out from Tesco last week um, suitably uninspiring on the top line. I think the what positives you can draw out of the statement is that the areas that are demonstrating most growth at the moment, which includes online, but it also includes convenience stores, well Tesco's are well positioned there, certainly more better positioned and, uh, than, than William Morrison proved to be, who have just started their first online deliveries as of last week and woefully behind on the convenience store. So Tesco can at least hold their heads up and say that we're in the right places at the moment, but with a 27-28% market share undoubtedly they're feeling the pinch from the online community making its onward march. We should have Ocado um, reporting later this week. Um, finally, just want to sort of comment on the um, uh, position in the um, European peripheral debt. Um, it's only that I mentioned this one last week and it sort of continued its trend into the second second sort of period of um, 2014. Yeah. That is the declining yields continue to be seen in Spain um, back now down to sort of 3.79%. That actually did touch um, around 3.6% um, during the sort of week. Um, this was around um, Mr Draghi's speech and um, he hasn't come up with anything particularly new um, to keep keep the bulls uh, um, uh, happy, um, so there was a little bit of a snapback, but nevertheless, that um, that trend that we're seeing in in the sort of declining yields in Europe at the moment is a continued positive for equity markets.